We're going to jump back into section 3.4 in our books today. And we did example one yesterday. We learned how to multiply fractions. And then you guys, as you may recall, um, you showed me that you knew how to multiply 5 eighths times 2 thirds. We did a couple of different strategies. And then you guys came up to the quick checks and showed me that you knew how to do it. So we're going to move on. So flip the page. And we're going to move on to example two today. And let me read it to you as you read it to yourself on page two of your notes. On Friday, three-sevenths of the 28 students in a class went to a music competition. How many students were still in class? Okay? So we know that three-sevenths of them went to a music competition. That means all the rest of them stayed behind. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. I know you probably know how to work this. Let me ask you a couple of questions. What in this problem tells you that we are going to be multiplying numbers today. Okay, take a look. There's a word I'm looking for. What word tells you that you're going to multiply? Okay, that's tricky because this is part of math vocabulary. We want to be really good at discerning this as we read word problems. Okay, Nate, what do you think? How many? How many could be any operation? It really could. It really could. What do you think? Oh, you got it. Okay? So I want to make sure that you know that the word of means multiply. Okay? If I take half of 12, what is half of 12? Six. Okay? So let me show you how I got six. Okay, so half of 12 is just an extra kind of bonus example here. Half of 12. Now, one half is in fraction form. Can you make 12 fraction form? How do you do that, Blair? 12 over one. Do 12 over 1. Okay, then just some of you, you don't like cross canceling yet, that's fine. Multiply straight across the top. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 1 is 2. What's 12 divided by 2? 6. 6. So half of 12 of means to multiply. Okay, let's go back to our word problem in example 2. They're asking us, what is 3 sevenths of 28? Okay, so let's make sure that we understand what they're asking us. Three sevenths of 28. That's how many kids went to a music competition. Okay, so let me let me get you guys to do me a quick favor. I'm not going to be able to pick this up on the video. Uh, I'm not writing for a second. Let me get Nicole, Todd, A. B. Avery, Nate, you five stand up here. Okay, Shannon Watson, six seven. Okay. <coughs> Okay, we have seven total people here. I'm trying to give you a visual, okay? Seven total people. Now, what would be three sevenths of those seven? Um, three. Just three. Mm -hmm. So Nicole, Todd, and Nate sit down. Okay? They are the ones that went to the music competition. So there's your three sevenths. They went to the music competition. What about the other four? They did They left. They did not go to the music competition. They stayed behind. Okay? So go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to kind of give you a quick visual. With seven people, three sevenths of them went to the music competition. The other four sevenths did not. Okay? I can't see. Now, I'm so sorry, I got blinded by the projector. Okay. Now, what are they asking us to find out in this problem? Do we want to know how many kids went to the music competition, or do we want to know how many kids stayed behind? Okay. That's what we know. That's what we want to know. How many students were still in class? Sometimes we do math problems. And we do the math, but we didn't answer the question. Wait, so that's what they did twice. 
No, they didn't ditch class because a music competition would be um, something that's approved, something you would go to, and they would be definitely excused from class for that. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this. I want to give you some options, okay? So here's option one. Um, find three-sevenths of 28. Now you can do that, but that's only going to tell you how many kids went to the competition. What are we trying to find? How many stayed behind and didn't go to the competition? Okay? This tells you how many went. We want to know how many didn't go. All right? So how do we set this up? So we'll do three sevenths times of means times, and then make your whole number 28 over 1. I got the answer. Awesome. Okay. Now, for you non cross cancelers, you're going to have to probably do a little bit of um, division, multiplication, and division off the side of your paper. For those of us that do like cross canceling, this is going to be real simple for you. Okay? Now, we're not going to be able to do this diagonal. The 3 and the 1, nothing reduces that. What reduces 7 and 28? 4. So the number 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. 28 divided by 7 is 4. So, so how many kids? 12 kids. Now, this 12, think about it. Do we answer the question? We didn't answer the question yet. We know a piece of the puzzle, but we haven't answered the question. Okay? So we just found out that 12 kids went to the competition. So out of the 28, if 12 are gone, how many stayed? Good. Okay? So you take your, take your total number. Good job. Take your total number, 28, and subtract 12 from it, and that's how many kids Stay behind. So everybody represented four people. I like four um, the seven of you represented the big group. The three of you that I had sit down represented the kids that went to the music competition. Okay, so we and then the other four represented the kids who didn't go to the competition. Okay? So that's option one. Okay? Is you, you know I'm going to do the math, but when I solve, I do three sevens times 28. That's not the answer, but it's going to help me get it to the answer. Okay, so you can do it that way. Here's option two. Here's option two. You could look at it and go, well, three sevenths, that's the group of kids that went to the music competition. So what's the other four sevenths? Hmm, that's interesting. So three sevenths went to the music competition. So what what about the other four sevenths? Did they go to the music competition? Okay, they stayed behind. Okay, so what what is three sevenths plus four sevenths? Seven sevenths. Seven sevenths, which is one whole. Okay, well our one whole, the big group, is 28, okay? And we know that part of that group went to the music competition and part stayed behind. So what you could do in option two is you could go, well, they said three sevens went to the music competition, but they're asking me how many didn't go, so what fraction would I use instead? I don't want to use three sevens. That's how many kids went to the music competition. So what's the rest? What would what would fill in the whole group? Three sevenths plus what's the rest of it? Four sevenths. So you could go, this is the group that didn't go. So that's what I'm going to multiply times 28. And that's going to tell me how many kids didn't go to the competition. Okay? So I like cross-canceling. So... We're going to reduce 7 and 28 again by 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. 28 divided by 7 is 4. How many kids stayed behind? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16
I gave you two options. I don't really care which one you choose, but you need to make sure you need to make sure that you're answering the question. So always look at your answer and go, did I actually answer the question? What did I just find out? Okay? Let me erase here, Watson, and I'll have you come up. Okay. Alright, and I'll give you your pen. Here you go. And let you get going here. And set them up. Great setup. Um, in, the, in Quick Check, at the bottom of your page, they said there are 168 members in an orchestra, and three eighths of them play the violin. How many members play the violin? So, what's different about the Quick Check than the example above it is they get they told you what part of the orchestra played violin, and that's what they're asking you to find. So you, you don't need to worry about those the other five eighths that don't play violin. That's okay, you don't have to worry about that. You just take three eighths of 168 and you'll know how many violin players you have. And in, in this particular orchestra, there are 63 violin players. How did you do? <laughs> yes, we will have them work. Okay, now let's get to example three. This is this is kind of weird. So there's a couple of rules I need to talk to you about. First of all, I'm going to write them vertically. Okay. So what they're asking us to do is they want us to multiply the mixed number times another mixed number. Well, the thing is, you can use mixed numbers and keep them in mixed number form when you're adding and subtracting, but not when you multiply or divide. So here's a rule that we need to remember. Rule, always change mixed numbers into improper fractions before, and I'm going to underline before, multiplying. Okay, this is also true for division, but since we're not doing division today, we're just going to focus on multiplying. So this is a really key rule, and I wrote it real big on your paper, and I want you to write it really big on your paper. So it's big on mine, hopefully it's big on yours. You can highlight it too if you need to. So this is not a good form. A lot of kids mess this part up because they forget that one key rule. And they, what they do is they treat it like addition. So they'll go, oh, two times four, they, and then they multiply the fractions. You can't do that. That's not, that's not proper. It's not appropriate. Um, so first step, we're going to change them into improper fractions. All right? So David, uh, two and three fifths, what is that as an improper fraction? Two and three fifths. Is it the same setup as uh, like you go there mm -hmm. and add it? Yep. So it would be 10, it would be 13 fifths. You got it, 13 fifths. All right, and Nicole, change four and a half for me. Nine halves? No, it's just me. Yeah, this would be nine halves, yep. All right, so. Um, now you have your two fractions. Remember improper fractions? That's perfect form. And I like to cross cancel. As you look at your diagonals, do you see anything that reduces? No. I don't either. So we're just have to be content with multiplying straight across. So what is 13 times 9? 117. And then and then over 10. So, 11 and 7 tenths. Will somebody grab my cord for me? Where is it? Um, it's hooked in the wall back behind it. I should have my name on, on the uh, cable. 
Yeah, so you should end up with 11 and 7 tenths. That's exactly right. So you guys are getting real good. I'm not going to show the, the math of how to change the improper fraction into a mixed number. You guys are real good at that, so I'm not real concerned about that at all. Can you report it? Yeah. All right, so um, try the quick checks and, and see how you do on those. What's our rule for multiplying mixed numbers? Turn it, into an Turn it into an improper fraction. You got it. Thanks, Nate. I appreciate it. And try those on your own. We'll get some, get some volunteers to come up and show us how to do this.